So we're often asked uh, where our organization is located, and uh, my most instinctual answer is wherever needed. Uh, we're uh, completely volunteer. It's a coalition of the willing, white hat hackers trying to use their hacking magic to make the world a safer place. We've really been surprised to see how or organically we have grown. Some people merely advocate, some people participate, some people lead. Without trying, we found ourselves the phone a friend for domestic and international policymakers. One thing we learned in our journey is that sometimes these innovations cause harm. Asbestos, for example, it was lightweight, fire retardant, could be accompanied in buildings or in wiring. I believe Underwriters Laboratories pushed it pretty hard as you know a wonderful solution. Asbestos, when it d decays, causes cancer. And I was worried that simply putting connectivity into every aspect of our life might in some cases be cyber asbestos, right? We did it for the best of reasons, but ultimately some of the risks we introduced, um, the chickens came home to roost and we end up regretting some of those decisions. One of our early focus areas was automotive. Uh, everyone either drives a car or rides in one at some point. And what we saw was cars were no longer just glass and steel, they were computers on wheels. So maybe you can hack the stereo over the Bluetooth, but that shouldn't be able to shut off the brakes, turn the steering wheel at high speed, or endanger the lives of the passengers. And right now, almost every car has zero segmentation isolation between the infotainment system and the physical operations of the vehicle, increasingly controlled by powerful motors and software. So as cars became more connected, any crisis of confidence in the public to trust these connected vehicles could postpone the benefits of autonomous vehicles and semi-autonomous vehicles, which stand to save significant loss of life. 95% of fatalities or more are due to human error and human choice. So we want the promise of connected vehicles. We have to be diligent about the peril Of all the areas where bits and bytes meet flesh and blood, the one I was probably most concerned about was medical. A lot of the technology in the medical ecosystem is incredibly old, incredibly vulnerable, and they've just never really thought about security. So while there are only 20 car makers, there are 10,000 medical device makers. Our estimate was that 85% of hospitals in the US lack a single qualified cybersecurity person on staff, not one. It's not just about privacy. Most of the regulations and focus in healthcare is on privacy, uh, health records, patient data. But what we started to see is that uh, these hacks of hospitals could affect patient care, initially referring to Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital, which got ransomed by SamSam. A single flaw and a single medical device took out an entire hospital for a week. They had to divert ambulances. They had to cancel surgeries and move critical care patients from one hospital to another. This is harrowing. This could lead to a loss of life. One of the proudest moments of my life was working with the FDA uh, in a way just, we just didn't really think was possible. We tried to show how previously demon demonstrable hacks like the hack of a pacemaker or the hack of an insulin pump or the hack of a bedside infusion pump could lead to a loss of life. And we wrote the Hippocratic Oath for Connected Medical Devices. That was stunning because we both cared about the medical technologies which could directly harm a patient in the availability of health delivery in hospitals where minutes or hours are the difference between life and death if you can talk again if you can walk again if you're still living in the fda terms a recall can happen for a medical device but you usually have to have proof of harm that's the, that's the term of art, proof of harm, which means people have to have died and you have to have evidence that they died because of hacking. A hacker named Billy Rios had found a bedside infusion pump flaw. They give you IV drips or drugs or things you need to be treated with. And he found that without authentication, he could empty a three hour dose in 30 seconds uh, into a patient. Uh, and one afternoon, I got a call asking if I'd like to talk to Reuters. And I said, sure, why not? what are we talking about? They said, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do the first recall uh, for safety communication. 
uh, for purely cybersecurity reasons. We just did the first corrective action that's gonna send a warning shot to all 10,000 medical device makers that you have to take cybersecurity seriously. We liken it to cyber hygiene, just like you would scrub in before surgery, your technology should be free of risks and known defects and contagions that might affect patient care and patient outcomes. And that became kind of the proof point for other safety critical sectors to realize that they too had to step up to the plate and take similar bold actions. Uh, I think that was really the inflection point for the cavalry. We just turned eight years old on August 1st. And every year when we hit our birthday, I ask, what is the next step for the cavalry? Does the world need a cavalry? You know, have we sufficiently identified the problem and catalyzed corrective action? It's getting pretty scary out there. So I think the needs and the role of the cavalry change as the ground truth and the consciousness changes. What's really sobering here during the pandemic is if you zoom out, the predators are here and things are on fire everywhere. There is so much work to do, and this cannot be the first 50 people that join the cavalry. This cannot be the thousand plus that currently participate. You need to participate. The world is increasingly dependent on digital infrastructure, which means they are increasingly dependent on you. So my question is, what are you willing and able to do?